how we interpret the world around us that shapes how we respond because how we interpret results events that that shapes our thinking and our thinking leads to either action or inaction and that can be positive or that can be negative and there is a there there's a skill to this there's a it, it's an acquired skill and it has to be taught over time people have to pick it up through either experience or again from a teacher like yourself and as a leader you need to be you need to be aware of this because there are there are perceptions and misperceptions within the minds of your students and you have to you have to address that because ultimately when we have those misperceptions when when students they 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 incorrectly interpret events or results in the classroom that can affect their achievement and so as a leader it's your job to really focus on how students are interpreting those results and events that take place in the classroom there is a scene from the movie the patriot it came out in the late 90s so um <laughs> Spoiler alert on a movie that came out in the late 90s. Uh, it takes place during the during the Revolutionary War. Mel Gibson is in it. And there was this scene and at the end where the British they're they're dominating this this battle. They're dominating and overwhelming the colonists in this battle to the point where you know, you get that that slow, sad music playing. You see the colonists, they're slowly dying off. The British are winning and they've got this evil smile on their face as they realize, oh, we're going to get them. We got this. And then you see a person who was supposed to be carrying the the colonial flag. That person drops a flag and they run this way. And so that causes everybody else to just run away from the fight and mel gibson he, he's a leader he looks around and he sees that all of his guys they have perceived that okay this guy dropped the flag it's all over we're done everybody else is is running this way that means i need to run this way as well well mel gibson he 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 reads that he reads that and being a good leader what does he do he runs the other way with him. No, <laughs> no, he doesn't run away from the fight. What he does is he picks up the flag. He picks up the flag and he runs towards the battle. Now, I as I was demonstrating that, notice I'm using two hands. Yes, he picks up he picks up the flag with both hands and he gets to a high point and he's waving the flag for all to see. And then you see one by one the look on his soldiers' faces like they see this and they there's a there's a perception. There's an interpretation of the fact that the leader is waving the flag. He's just all vulnerable. He could he could have been shot, could have been could have been killed. He's waving the flag and they read that and they interpret that correctly as it's time to move forward it's time to take the fight to the enemy now ultimately you know the rest of the story the the colonists they're able to prevail in that situation but that is a, a perfect example of what we're talking about here in terms of interp interpreting uh, the world around us interpreting results and events your students, they need to be taught. They need to learn from you, the leader. They need to learn how to interpret results and events around them. Because one of the keys to success is being able to do the right thing at the right time. To do the right thing at the right time. And it's really difficult to know that it's really difficult to do that to act with wisdom that's that's a definition of wisdom doing the right thing at the right time but in order to do that you need to be able to read situations you need to be able to read results you need to be able to read events correctly 
So if if a student if a student enters your classroom and they say I, I'm, I'm just I'm not good at social studies and here is the proof this test that I didn't do well on if that's the way that they read it if they they if they continue to read the situation that way if they continue to interpret the situation that way then imagine the 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 inaction that's going to take place so there so there is there there's 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 very little to compel that student to try something different so you have inaction and and then quite the opposite you'll get action in the the same di same direction so one failed test after another failed test after another failed test and that's going to just further further solidify that thinking that 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 poor thinking that poor interpretation of those results now i want to share with you because i i know this is this is very very challenging and you know students they're so focused on points and that's one of the challenges that we face as leaders in the classroom we have to help students to get, get you know, don't focus so much on the accumulation of points. Are you getting better? And it's it's difficult. You have to continue to have that conversation with them. But that's where you want them. That's what you want them thinking about. You want them thinking about, no, OK, you didn't get an A. You, you got a C. But did you progress? Did you get better? That's where it is. Now, let's talk about this. I want to tell you a little story when we talk about um, when we talk about interpretation, um, interpreting the world around us, interpreting results, interpreting events. So in the middle here, in this picture here, you see a picture of Miss Catherine Switzer. Now she was the first woman to officially enter into the Boston Marathon. Now the year is 1967. The year is 1967. The first, the first, uh, the first Boston Marathon was ran in 1897. Okay, that's important. We're going to come back to that. So women were not allowed to participate in this race. They were not allowed to participate in this race. So what you're seeing here in this picture, this is kind of a big deal. Catherine Switzer. So it's important to mention the year before, the year before there was a woman who jumped the fence. She didn't enter the race officially, but she jumped the fence and she ran. Um, but Catherine Switzer, she signs up, she runs the race and the year's 1967. And it's really, it's really something because when other runners, when they realize, oh, oh, <laughs> There is a woman over there running a race. That's pretty cool. I was and and so they asked her for tips. Hey, what any advice that you can give me to get get my to to encourage my my girlfriend, my wife to run? So they they were all about it. These guys were all about it. Now it's important also to mention. You see the guy to her right wearing the uh, sweatshirt that says track at the top. I believe his number. It looks like it's three hundred. Um, she's 261, of course. Now, that is that's the guy she was dating at the time. So that's her boyfriend. That's important. So it's 1967. She's making history by simply running this race. Now, it wasn't without resistance. It wasn't without resistance. And of course, you can imagine that she knew that there was going to be resistance because it's 1967 uh, and women were just not allowed to run in this race. This race has been going on since 1897. That was the way it was. That was the current condition. That was what that was the information that she had. She was able to interpret to read, to take in. It's 1967. No woman has ever ran, entered to run in this race since it began in 1897. That was the reality. That was the reality, reality that she was working with. But check this out. 
So again, it wasn't without resistance. So here you're going to see three, three different pictures here. So we're going to go from left to right here. So there was a, there was a race manager. His name was Jock Simple. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. But anyways, you see on the left here, he realizes, hey, that's a woman running in this race. So you can see the anger in his face. He's really upset. He wants her to stop running. Get out of here. And as a matter of fact, uh, his quote, uh, a quote from him was, get the hell out of my race. That's what he said to her. He's got that anger. And, you know, thankfully, we have this. We have the, the pictures of of this event because as we look back on it we can learn from we can learn from this and you know we thank uh Catherine Switzer for her bravery um as we march forward as we progress as a society so Jock Simple he wants her out of the race and he tries to remove her her uh her number off of her shirt and her boyfriend the guy 390 is is his number so the boyfriend, he realizes this is happening. And the boyfriend, as you can see, the boyfriend is kind of built. As a matter of fact, he played football. So uh, the boyfriend, he realizes this is happening. And then the, the second picture there, the boyfriend uh, simply helps Jock to the ground. <laughs> That's what the boyfriend does. So he helps Jock to the ground. And then in the, in the third picture there, you see... Jock is heading towards the ground with the help of the boyfriend. So that takes place as Catherine Switzer is, is running this race. And, you know, she, she ultimately, she was able to finish the race, but again, like this, this freaked her out a little bit, you know, because she knew going into it, it was going to be, there was going to be some unknown. Because again, there no, a woman had never run this race before, n never officially entered into this race. And so there was uncertainty. And as she was running the race, she, and, and turning corners, she was wondering, okay, is there gonna be police? Is there gonna be someone else to try to stop me from running this race? And there were, there were multiple opportunities, multiple chances for her to quit. I, I am certain that in her mind, the thought, the thought ran through her mind and said, you know what? after what just happened with this guy, you know, perhaps, you know, we've, we've done enough. Um, perhaps we should just pull out. So I don't want to get arrested or anything like that. Maybe I should just stop. So she had that information that that's, that's swirling around the possibility of being arrested, the possibility of being assaulted, all of that, all of that. And as she took that information in, as she, as she processed it, she made the decision that she was going to continue to finish the race. And we, as a society, are thankful that she made that decision because that changed so many things. Her entering this race, enduring this, it changed so many different things because as time goes on, women are allowed to enter the race and eventually they establish uh, a separate race race for for women um to compete against each other so so many so many good things have happened as a result of Catherine Switzer deciding to enter this race run this race and endure so i tell students and this is this is me i tell students that you know, the purpose of this of school, the purpose of school is to learn how to set and accomplish goals while dealing with adversity along the way. And that's what Catherine Switzer was able to do. She was able to deal with that adversity. Her goal was to finish that race. And she did it while dealing with adversity. But before that, there were there were these factors, the, the fact that this race uh, since 1897, a woman had never officially entered the race. And I'm sure she heard all these different things that people uh, that people around her would say about the idea of a woman entering um, the Boston Boston Marathon, about the place of a woman in society, about the limitations 
on a woman. She heard all of those things. She took in all of that information. And how did she interpret that? Did she let that limit her? No, she didn't. She did something that no one has ever been able to do that. No one, no one, no one stood up and said, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first. I'm sure many thought about it. You know, as, as I said before, in 1966, there was a woman who jumped the fence and, and she ran. But Catherine Switzer, she did it. She entered, she ran the race, she endured. And throughout all of the adversity, she didn't perceive that as this is why I should quit. She perceived it as, you know, what I've got a goal here and I'm going to push forward and I'm going to do it because I know I can do it. So the the interpretation as we as we switch gears, as we switch gears to your students, that 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 interpretation of results and in, in the events that have to take place in the classroom, that matters. It matters because here, here's the thing for students. The results, the results whether they be good or bad, the results are speaking. Are you listening? And I, I'm realizing this with my daughter and I, it's just crazy because I don't know, you know, the idea that, that kids come into the world with the, as a blank slate, that's, you know, I'm finding out that's not true because there are some things that my, my kids have picked up, but they didn't necessarily learn from me or their mother. And so it's just really interesting. So, when we talk about interpretation of results and, and listening to those results, you know, my, my daughter, she struggles and like she when she has to share her work with uh, with us as her parents, she will she will be very hesitant to share the work that she doesn't do very well on. As a matter of fact, she had a worksheet uh, just last night where she the purpose was telling time. And I think there were. 20 questions and she got 10 of them incorrect and like she was just very ashamed embarrassed to to share that information with us and like you know me you know i say results give us the opportunity to try again with better information results <laughs> results are that they are something that um that, that we should celebrate because we get that feedback but I'm going to have to listen to myself a little bit more. I'm going to have to watch some more of these podcasts to, to learn. How do I how do I deliver that message to a nine year old? Like I, I work with with the older ones. OK, I, I work. I worked at the high school level um, and then the middle school level. I think I'm, I'm, I'm proficient as well. But man, the younger ones for me, that's challenging. So I'll tell you what. If for those of you who work with the littles, the elementary level, if you have any tips to share with me and the rest of the audience about how to encourage students to 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 seek feedback, to to learn, to embrace failing forward, please share with the group because I am struggling and I'm going to have to do some research to figure out how to get my daughter to embrace feedback. And just embrace the fact that, okay, I'm not going to get everyone right, but at the very least I can learn because I didn't do well on this assignment, but I can learn from this and I can do better on the next assignment. So share those tips, share those tips in the comment section, please share, share with the group. We're a learning community here. We really are. I, I, I don't have all the answers, but what I do is as I learn, I share with you. So again, Say this to your students, the results are speaking. Are you listening? The results are speaking. Are you listening? Because as I said before, one, they give us feedback. Two, they also give us confidence. They give us confidence because there is, there's, a, there's something, there's, there's always a positive takeaway. There, there's something that we can pull from that as we, as we get past the fact that it's it's not a good number there's something there we can learn something from those results 
We got to learn something from those results. Number three, it also gives students insight about their learning. It helps them to own their learning. It helps them to learn about themselves because when they're able to dig in and they're able to understand, oh, I got this question incorrect because I was thinking this way. I should have been thinking this way. Oh, that's that again. That's a cause for celebration. That's a cause for celebration when students learn more about themselves they learn what how they learn what's what's better for them what adjustments they can make going forward and i think that this is this is something that students they they need to value because they're learning about themselves as an individual all right so the other thing that you know, we just definitely need to get across to students is that they just the results. They just they don't tell the complete story. They don't tell the complete story. There is there is there is more, but they have to be willing to interpret and embrace the notion that there are there's there's more there's there's more to there's more to the, the results than just the number. I have to be willing to embrace that because if they're willing to embrace that, then going forward, there, there is less sting. Now, certain, certainly there's disappointment if they don't get the great that they want, but if they, if they truly believe that the results don't tell the complete story, that there is more then it, it takes away the sting a little bit and they're able to, engage in the problem solving process and do these other things that I'm going to share with you right now. So here are, there's just three ways. I'm going to give you three ways how, to, how you can help students interpret results. Okay. How to help students interpret results. And this speaks to their perception of, of things that, that, you know, a thing of other events that happen in the classroom as well. But we're going to, we're going to give you three things Three ways you can help students interpret results and have a good perception of events that take place in the classroom. All right. So number one, you have to help students turn those negative emotions into positive emotions. So definitely if a student doesn't get the grade that they were looking for, there's going to be some there's going to be some emotions there, possibly some negative emotions. And what you don't want to happen is you don't want that to be something that is. That is just all too familiar. That's all too common for students. Um, that's got to be something that's disrupted quickly. If students if they start to just really sit in that, if they get that 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 negative result and they're looking around and they see other students, they're they're celebrating and you don't want them feeling uh, ashamed. You don't want them feeling sad and, and just and sitting in that. And then then come then after that comes some some self-talk. You need to interrupt that. You need to turn those negative emotions into positive emotions and here's one way you, here's one way that you do that you have to you have to help them change their words and this means that around your room you've got positive affirmations that you you encourage your students to say to themselves that you may even start your class with saying positive um, uh, affirmations corporately um, so you you empower students with these phrases. Additionally, you may even have to go one on one with your students who, you know, they really, really struggle in this area. Perhaps you may say, hey, I noticed that you said you said I'm never good at social studies. I've never been good at social studies. I want to remind you that your test average is trending upwards. Now, that's cause for a celebration. And I want you to celebrate with me because you're moving in the right direction. And I think that's awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. So different things like that. You have to you have to interrupt that thinking in a way that pulls students 
out of out of those negative emotions because out of those negative emotions comes that thinking that you have act you have probably action that we don't want to happen or inaction meaning they're not making necessary adjustments to get better it's just it's just either staying the same or it's getting worse and that's okay with them because they said at the beginning they were never ever good at social studies and there's their proof so you need to get in there and and disrupt that thinking disrupt that thinking don't let them sit in that and then the other thing turning negative emotions into positive emotions I want you to emphasize gratitude in your classroom. Gratitude, 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 gratitude. Why gratitude? Because gratitude, it makes us happy. It increases happiness when people focus on the th on, on on being grateful for what they have, the things in their lives. It helps increase happiness. Studies show that people who who focus on gratitude the things that they're thankful for they're grateful for they are more happy so that's something that you can do in your classroom you can encourage students to have a, a gratitude journal you can you could just you can add it in the your your classroom routine at the at the beginning of class like hey someone let let me hear some things that we're thankful for you can you can do it like that in your one-on-one -on -one conversations with students before you start before you give them feedback on something or it could be just you just touching base with them you share something that you're grateful for and then you have the students share something that they're grateful for gratitude really instilling that in your students Again, this is a way to disrupt them, to get them, get them focused on something else other than because you never know what students are going through. I mean, that's just the same for everybody, right? You never know what someone is going through. And this is good medicine for you as well. If you're going through something in your life, get off of that. Stop. Don't stop dwelling on that for just a second and focus on the things that in your life that you are thankful for, the things that are going well, the things that that make you so, so blessed. Focus on those things. And what that's going to do is that's going to shake things up, get you out of that that negative, that negative thought pattern. And it's going to help you to experience that happiness. And, and then you're going to realize that's ah, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. There is there is some there are some positives here. And when you get to that point, that's going to help you to be more likely to okay, let's start some problem solving. Let's what adjustments can I make? How can I do better? Didn't do too well the way that I wanted to on that, but I can do better the next time. All right, number 2. Number 2. When we talk about how to help students interpret results number one we turn those negative emotions into positive emotions number two focus the attention on next steps we gotta focus the attention on next steps what is the next step you can't build positive momentum without action can't build positive momentum without action if students are if they stay in that negative emotion the negative emotion is allowed to prevail. The negative emotion is allowed to speak up here. And then we've got these negative thoughts, these negative thoughts that don't lead to action. It's just like there, there's just nothing moving. There, there's no there's no good interpretation of the results. There's no focusing on feedback. And that, and that means that there are no necessary adjustments to do better next time. And so feedback is just meaningless at this point. Because remember, feedback gives us the opportunity to try again, try again with better information. And now that we have that better information, what do we need to do differently? We've got better information. So this better information has got to dictate a change in action. Abraham Maslow, he once said, you will either step forward into growth or you will step back into safety let me give you that again you will either step forward into growth or you will step back into safety 
And we don't we don't we don't want to live. We don't want to live in this so-called comfort zone of safety. We don't want our students to live in that comfort zone of safety, because remember, we want our students to learn how to set and accomplish goals while dealing with adversity along the way, because adversity is going to come your way. No matter what you're doing, no matter what you are doing, Kathleen Switzer, she was aware of that. She knew that adversity was going to come her way. And because of that, because she was able to interpret the situation correctly, she was able to finish the race. Now, the, the, the results, the information that she had to take in was telling her that, oh, man, it's been a they've been running this race since 1897. I don't think this is a good idea for you to do that. But no, 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 no. She she interpreted everything correctly. She's like, no, I've trained. I've worked hard. I have the skills. I can do this. So, yes, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to run this race. And adversity may come my way, but no, I'm going to do this. And so that's that's what you that's what you want your students to do. And so with your words, with your words, you need to get students focused on, OK, all right, eyes here. I know you're disappointed based on that test score. What do you think your next action step should be? That's the mindset. What do you think the next action step should be? And so I think, you know, coming up with a protocol. Coming up with a protocol, man, that's a that's a really good idea. Coming up with a protocol, you know, just like, OK, you got the results. Yeah, you're disappointed. You know, process that for a little bit, process that for a little bit and let me know when you want to have a one on one meeting so that we can talk about action steps. Let's write those action steps down. Go forward. Ooh, that's good. That's good. I just freestyled that. I like that. I'm going to I'm going to fine tune that. But that's good stuff. I love it. So that's two. focus attention on next steps. And then lastly, I want to share with you this emphasize yet yet. You know, uh, just running running a marathon, I, I admire. I admire people who are able to run to, to run that long. That's, that's just a long, that's a long way. And, you know, with, with running too, cause I'll run on a treadmill and like, I'll, I'll use these different programs as I'm running. And, and I know before I start to run the program, I know how much time <laughs> I know how much time and usually they're between 20 and 35 minutes. And so I know as I'm running, you know, I look at the clock, I'll look at the clock and see, okay, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. Like every time I look at the clock, I know that I'm not there yet, but I'm getting closer. And, you know, the same, you know, the same applies to, to runners. They, they know their, they know their time, they know their distance, they understand their pace. And that helps to, that helps to encourage them. It helps to encourage them and, and keep them moving forward because they understand the power of yet because they're so focused on, on timing, on their pace on looking at the distance like they 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 take in all of that information they interpret all of those results and they understand okay all right based on where i am now i need to pick it up pick it up a little bit but i'm moving closer i'm not there yet but i can do this i'm just not there yet and and as a leader as a leader, you have to plant these seeds within the um, within the minds of your students. You just you're not there yet. And what I really admire about um, about cross country running is that 
you know, it's not necessarily a race against the other people. No, you're really racing against yourself and you're trying, you're, you set a goal for yourself in terms of your time. And I like that. And I think that that actually, that actually makes it more exciting for the participants. I think this is just the way I, I see it. It makes it more exciting. It makes it more beneficial for the participants because they, they, you just don't get caught up in the comparison. Mark Twain once said, comparison is the thief of joy. And you know how this works in the classroom. Students, they'll look around and they'll realize, oh man, I didn't get the highest score. Or you know, my daughter, she's also caught up in trying to be the first one finished. Comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Your students need to run their own race. They need to run their own race. They need to be focused on themselves and they need to realize that, hey, you're not there yet. And it doesn't matter what other people are doing. It doesn't matter where they are in their race. You're not there yet, but you're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And with every good decision that you make, you're making progress towards your goal. Comparison is the thief of joy. You're not there yet emphasize that and so that is a that's a habit but it's, it's got to be nourished over an extended period of time and it's going to be challenging because what you're trying to do i said that is a habit you know the when they embrace the the power of yet so you're trying to teach new habits while also uh while also deleting poor habits from the from the minds of your students. So it takes time. So let me give you those three again. So number one, you need to turn those help them turn those negative emotions into positive emotions. Number two, focus their attention on next steps. What do we do next? And then number three, emphasize the power of yet. Well, I thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of the Marvin Bird Show. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your support. And then also uh, check out MarvinBird.com, MarvinBird.com for uh, my blog post articles. They're a wonderful opportunity for some quick professional development. Some of the best professional development is, I believe, is professional development that you go out and get for yourself. So uh, once again, the classroom leadership blog, those articles are, takes you five minutes or less to read those. Once again, marvinbird.com, check that out. And then also birdlinks.com, birdlinks.com, B-Y-R-D-L-I-N-K-S, birdlinks.com for the latest education news. So if you check those out, I greatly appreciate it. And so until we meet again, please don't forget that teachers are leaders.